Hello. What I thought I'd do today is do something of a channel update where I talked about why I've not been doing many videos recently and then talk about my plans for when the creation kit for Fallout 4 comes out. I also thought it'd be nice to double it with a tour of my Sanctuary Hills since it's the settlement I'm most proud of and I put most time into. So to start with, uh, here's my character who's got uh, gradually more unkempt as the game goes on. I'd also have him just wear this Drifter's outfit now because he's, he's level like 120 something so he's way too powerful for... Uh, to actually put any armor on. This is all pre-recorded footage that I'm talking over. So the first thing I did was cross the bridge into Sanctuary where normally we'd be greeted by Preston in that guard post up there, but for some reason he's not there today. So the places I show on the tour first are an empty house, part of a wall which keeps people from entering other than via the bridge, and the next to that is an area where traders visit and all get clustered together as you can see. So the reason I've not been doing any videos for a while is quite simple really. I mean, firstly, it has a lot going on with Project Brazil, which is my primary mod project. And though I've now submitted my last plugin for that, I've still got quite a lot of other things going on, which I will get to. What you're seeing on the screen now is my quantum museum, where I display all the new color quantums I've collected. And uh, as you can see, I've grossly overestimated uh, how much space it would take to display them all. Uh, there's 45 on display now, and I'm saving up to put another 45 on the other shelves. I just need 6 or 7 more, I think, and probably not even that many. In the house directly below the museum, which is horribly noisy because of all the generators, is the Long's house. Now, this is their sparse looking kitchen, and through here is their bedroom where they sleep in separate beds. Across from that is the computer room where the quantum sign is controlled. And there's also a case full of drugs next to that terminal, because I kept all the stuff from a guy who lived there before the war who seems to have been a drug dealer. Across the road from there is one of the first structures I ever built, which is a common house for everyone to sleep in. It's pretty horrible, I know. Though, if they ever get thirsty, they can nip outside and pick up a nice nougat cherry to refresh them. The next few places I visit aren't very exciting. The first is a house full of beds, which I placed first part of a quest to build beds for everyone right at the start. And the second place I go is the house where Preston and Sturges live together. And both of those speak for themselves, so I thought I'd mention what's been keeping me so busy. Essentially, I'm studying for my master's degree at the moment, and yet next year I'll be starting a PhD. And both of those things require a lot of time and dedication, which means I've been struggling to balance making YouTube videos with the work I need to do for university. I also want to make sure I maintain some semblance of a social life, which has meant that when something had to give, it was for modding. However, now I've taken so much time out, I do want to try starting to rebalance everything and give more time to modding, as I'll talk about in a bit. Coming up on our right is the house which doubles as the crafting area and what was intended to be Mama Murphy's house, but for some reason it won't let me assign her to a bed so this has become Sheffield's house. You'll also have noticed up the street is the sanctuary sign, which I made before it was changed so wires didn't consume copper. The house is a bit sparse, but I think I might have been getting a bit fed up with putting furniture in at this point. Now, across the street is what I think is the main event, my house. I went to a lot of effort to both spruce it up with the fence and the patio furniture, but also to be sentimental so you'll notice my original mailbox there. Greeting us is a welcome mat slash fast travel marker beside which are freshly delivered newspapers. The house contains all my original furniture if I stood up the dining chairs. I've also decorated the place with every clean pre-war object I could find, which I'll show off now. Inside the fridge was some stuff too, though my original untouched for 200 years milk bottle somehow fell inside the bottom. I know it's there, because I TCL'd inside and saw it. And all this stuff really is the pride of Sanctuary Hills, because it took ages to collect and arrange it. Down here is where I keep the armour components I used to wear before I switched to more casual clothing. And next to that is a container of special or unique weapons. Across from there, I've got coolers of food, containers of notes and holotapes in them, and a wardrobe with special or unique clothing in it. Through here is my marital bedroom with some more holotapes in it, but also my bobblehead collection. I only used a guide to find two of those, which I was quite proud of. Next to that are containers with more random clothes and weapons in them. Then I've got my fan to keep me cool at night and my special clean teddy bear to cuddle. Across from there is my shrine to Sean. Now before I finish the story, I kept this room exactly as it was, but now I've moved stuff around a bit. 
on the table are the original blocks and rattle from the room, but I've also got a new toy car and a new toy truck that I imagine he'd have played with if he'd grown up with me. I deliberately played my character really sentimental, which is why I've got stuff like this. I've also got a container with my family holotapes and my wife's wedding ring in it. I used to carry that with me, but after I resolved my character's story, I decided it was time for him to let go. And in the corner, I've also got a safe full of unique or special junk. I quickly check out that clean umbrella stand before I left. There used to be a clean umbrella in it, but it's gone now for some reason. The final parts of my house are dog meat's clean bowl and his dog food. He lives in the back garden here, where you can see I've tried to make it look as homely as possible with the furniture and decorations and stuff. Now that's over, I check out the shops where I've got two special vendors, and you can also see the sanctuary sign better. The shop area also serves as a place for people to hang out at the end of the day, and then the next place I go is just a common house for people to relax in, so I'll take this chance to talk about my future plans. Obviously, as soon as the get comes out, I want to get into experimenting with it and creating mods. I've got a big plan for a companion mod I want to make, but that'll be a while off yet. I probably won't be making videos from day one, and the reason I say this is because I suspect I'll need to take time to get to grips with a new engine. I've taken some time looking at uh, Fallout 4 edit, and also uh, some time to look at the Skyrim creation kit to get me used to modding in the creation engine, but it's taken some time for me to get to grips with it. Once I feel like I'm ready, then I want to start trying to make regular videos again as long as my schedule allows. So over here, there's an empty house and another vending machine. Up above, we've got the famous sanctuary sign and another area where settlers can go and hang out together. I probably should have spent so long looking at this stuff, but uh, I'm not going to cut it. Upstairs is the main part of this room, and that's the magazine collection. I've got all the magazines, and I had to use a guide for a lot of them. I spent quite a bit of time making sure they all went on these stands, so that no collection was split over two stands. They all fit exactly on each one. The annoying thing is, there's one less than there are spaces, which has left a bit of a gap at the end. Over there is the terminal for the sanctuary light boxes. But over here is a chair where the king can sit and survey his kingdom. I don't think there's a whole lot left to see. In the next few minutes, we'll see the soldier statue, the generators for the sanctuary sign, then we'll go to another common house, which I built out of steel because at the time I was running out of wood. There are a few more empty houses, and then a monstrosity of a building, which I built before I realised there was a limit to how many people could move to a settlement, so it's just a box full of beds. I suppose I'll talk about what I want to do in the meantime before the Fallout 4 get comes out. I've got a whole bunch of funny or glitch videos that I've recorded, so I might upload some of them from time to time. I've also got a video about fixing a minor issue that I discovered, which I'll upload soon. Other than that, I probably won't be uploading a whole lot before the get comes out, so I hope people will stick around until then. I did a quick cut there because I wanted to show you the farm area before I finished. This is where most of the settlers and my companions work. I've also put Sean to work here. Paladin Dance also likes to hang around here. He spends most of his time asleep though, so he's a bit of a hopeless worker. I hope you found this video even a little bit interesting. I've really enjoyed the time I put into Fallout 4, and I'm excited for any new content Bethesda put out. I'm particularly excited for the get, because I can't wait to tinker around and see what I can do with it. Hopefully some of you will be watching when I put out my first creation kit tutorial. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.